All right, sorry, my daughter just called me from inside the house. I'm in our trailer doing this video. I'm gonna have to edit that together. Um, anyhow, I carry one on my ankle. Let's see if I can rip it off here. Right here on my ankle. And again, you can see it's been used. I don't just pull this stuff off and show you on video that it's tactical to carry this stuff. No, this is stuff I carry every single day because my family's life depends on it. Um, I've got these band these rubber bands these aren't just black rubber bands these are um my buddy gave these to me and i don't know where he got them from probably on amazon but they're uv bands so they won't break down like traditional rubber bands will and then this elastic deal i got this from a law enforcement supply store back when i was a cop um years ago years ago i mean I, this thing I, I wear this every single day anyhow so there's one tourniquet there's two there's three and i've got several different generations these are Gen 7s, I believe. All right, this is a Benchmade escape, rescue escape tool. Um, on one end, it's got a glass break, seatbelt cutter, oxygen tank wrench up top there. Um, and you can flip it over when it gets dull. And, and you know, I don't think you'd be doing a lot of uh, cutting, super cutting with this. But anyhow, fits nice in the hand if you need to break. Um, a window i you know if you're going to use this type of thing to break a window i would make sure you got some gloves on or wrap your hand in a, in a towel or shirt or sock or something uh these are north american rescue cheap shears cheap shears uh nine bucks maybe eight bucks uh but these are the best cheap shears they they're good quality they feel good in your hand and they work well cellox gauze um if you've never heard of cellox it's like quick clot um, Z, this is the Z-Fold hemostatic gauze. It's impregnated with the hemostatic gauze uh, or hemostatic agent. So basically you'd ball this up in a deep bleed, press it down on the vein, find it, and then just start Z-Fold and threading that thing on there and keep pressure on it. And then you could use like a pressure dressing here to wrap up that wound. <clears throat> I'm not a medic. I don't have any formal training other than basic CPR first aid and the wilderness survival training that I've gone through with search and rescue. Um, North American emergency bandage. This is the four inch flavor um good things to have major bleeds got another one this is just smaller of the z fold cellox gauze our daughter gets car sick um but if you have to go males have to go pee or what have you on road trips or wherever and you can't find a quick bathroom these are great they just punch open and they're pretty deep and then you just twist it and they've got these little plastic things that just go up like that to secure it Carry a couple of those in there. Um, geez. Lots and lots of gloves here. Uh, four, I've got a bunch of gauze in here. Bunch of just four by fours. Um, thick trauma pad. Um, and these are just wound dressings from Walmart, the Equate brand. <laughs> just another Sharpie, as if I needed another one of those. Okay, so these little plastic deals, these are like the extra gum that you can buy. Uh, it's the extra brand bubble gum, uh, chewing gum. You find them at supermarket or whatever. Uh, I just put them, make them into little little first aid kits. You know, I can hand out. There's kids' band-aids in there. There's a pair of gloves and, and some ibuprofens in there. But it just opens like that. Cheap little case. Why not? You know, I'm buying it. Might as well just use it. Put it to use. And that, it's easy to slide in your pocket. More gloves here, different different kinds. You know, a lot of people will buy the Tactical black gloves. And I love the black gloves. I just, these kind of look silly on your hands, but whatever. Um, but it's harder to, you know, if you're assessing someone like we do in search and rescue or medics do, someone's down, unconscious, you don't know what's wrong with them. So you're doing a field assessment, following their spine backwards to find any bleeds. It's hard. It's going to be harder at night to see this. Yeah, you'll have your headlamp on or what have you, but it's hard. It's harder to see blood on black or dark gloves. So use these and put buy bigger size. That way you could put several pairs on. If you're at a mass casualty mass casualty event, you can help somebody put on a tourniquet, stop the bleed, rip that pair off, and you've got another another set of fresh gloves. Um, OPAs, oral pharyngeal airways, tape. Yeah, I could look. I could get a kit. And I have them, thigh kits, bags I carry. I've got a full backpack dedicated to all this medical stuff. I keep this on me because I wear, I wear it every day. I take it to and from work. It's in my car. We go to the store, the hardware store, whatever it is. I'm bringing it with me. So I have it. 
Now, I like it loose in here so that I can just reach in and grab it or clamshell this thing wide open and then I can see everything. Um, it works for me. Big bulky dressings here. These are their five by nines Equate brand. Um, and I'll tell you a story here real quick. Something that happened to me um, this last summer. Cheap Mylar blanket. More thick of gauze there. More of them. More gloves. Tons of gloves. And then just some um, tape shears. You know? I don't want anything too sharp that's going to stab into someone's leg, especially my family. So spend some money on some okay quality stuff. And then I got a couple um, high fin chest seals here. Now, <laughs> they come in pairs for a reason. Um, if you've got a penetrating chest wound or something in the back, you want to seal both sides. You could use a glove to seal it. You could use a Ziploc bag to seal it, tape it on three sides. That way it has a vent so the air can get out, but the air can't get in. Or just spend the 15 bucks and get two chest seals when you open these up, I'm not going to do it because I rely on these. When you open these up, big red tab for your gross motor skills. It says wipe dirt fluid from skin with gauze, grip red tab to peel clear liner from dressing. Now it has the instructions on the, on the, on the seal itself as well. So follow the prompts. All right, that does it um, for this medical portion. All right, now this portion changes for me often. Uh, this is the big portion of the bag. Um, it clamshells all the way open here. Toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, this right here, it's been open because I review it often. This is my family's emergency communication plan. Just another notebook, bigger one. I just have a bunch of folded up paper towels. Two more magazines. A uh, bunch of snacks. Peanuts. There's these bumblebee tuna bags. They're great. Um, and then some beef jerky. And then look at that. I've got three more of these vomit. We call them vomit bags. Vomit bags. Um, and I just... I just found these. You guys have probably seen these on Facebook. They're the DeChoker FDA registered. These just came out, or I just found them recently. This is the adult one. I bought the three pack. So in the three pack, the adult, the infant, all the way up to toddler and then toddler to kid. So we keep the toddler and the kid one up on our refrigerator because primarily, you know, during, especially during COVID, um, you know, our daughter's doing school from the house um, and our son's here because he's not yet in school. But basically, you put this in the person's mouth. This is nice and squishy. Put this in their mouth if they're choking. And then you just start pulling pulling this. Now, don't you can watch their videos. And I'm giving them a, a shout out here. I've not been paid to, to give them any sort of shout out. They don't give me this product, anything. I bought this with my money. Basically, it's got this valve here. If you can see that. So when you pull it out and you go to push it in, it's not forcing that air into their mouth. This is a one way. So it's allowing the air to escape this tube so that you can quickly pull that back out and, and free that obstruction. Uh, just some, some socks, an extra undershirt and an extra pair of underwear. Um, I keep that in my backpack in case I need to change. Uh, I do a lot of overtime. And then just a couple small tools or a couple tools. Um, this is the Stanley pry bar, just small. I, I, I bought one for the, for the toolbox and I just love this thing. Um, you can use that as a wrench for fire hydrants. It fits and other things, but hammer to escape or extricate yourself from anything. Um, everything's falling on the ground. And then this is just a ratcheting screwdriver. It's got a bunch of, it's a heads there just for, you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah, this, this knife used to be strapped to my bag and, you know, but I don't want to draw any more attention to myself um, or look like a Rambo guy. But this is a Gerber. Love this knife. It's a full tang knife. And, you know, they're proudly made in Portland, Oregon. Anyways, it's got a glass break back there, but it's a nice quality solid knife. I'm not a bushcraft guy. I'm not anything. This is in case, you know, I find some cheesecake. Uh, use your imagination. Anyhow... 
um, that that's it for my bag, guys. Um, now, it doesn't change all that often other than, you know, if we're going somewhere with the kids, I'll put their snacks in the bag, what makes it a little heavier. Yeah, it's a big bag. The footprint, I mean, it's probably weighing 25 to 28 pounds. Um, but I have found over the years that this is stuff that I can't or don't want to live without. Um, so, you know, do what works for you guys. Um, again, I do search and rescue. So I hike with a 60 pound pack with all the tarps and tents and shelter. I don't carry that stuff in here. I have extra changes of clothes and boots and shoes in the car, hats, beanies, earmuffs, hand warmers. I have all that stuff in the car. Go back and watch the video when we, when Scott and I did that video of the, of the vehicle setup. Um, it's down in our, our, our YouTube channel. Um, just, you know, with 2020 being it, what it is and, and, uh, you know, have some stuff that you guys can use and rely on, um, stuff that's going to help you in a, in a poopy situation, whether it be, you know, heaven forbid medical stuff. Um, that's why I carry several tourniquets. There's four people in my family. Um, you know, I spend a lot of money on medical stuff and yes, this cell lock stuff, it, it, it expires. And when it does, I use it for, for training for myself and, and, you know, others, I don't hold the training. We just go through things and watch YouTube videos and stuff like that about how to use this stuff. Um, is that the best training? No. Is it better than sitting around and just buying stuff and keeping it in your pack? I don't know. I mean, you guys do what works for you and drop me a comment. Uh, let us, let me know what you think. Um, if you want to know anything more about any sort of, of these products, you can message us. Um, I can even give you a call on the phone and we could talk about stuff, you know, how, however that goes. Uh, anyways, you guys stay safe and uh, keep preparing.